Now, when we go in, we drill offshore. These are very expensive exercises. One well will cost anywhere between 50 and 150 million dollars. We're talking day rates from 500,000 to a million dollars a day. So before we go and start drilling in a particular area offshore, our geoscientists and drilling engineers evaluate all of the well completion reports. And these are the daily drilling logs and the final reports of wells that have been drilled in the same area, same geological context. Uh, they might review 20 or 30 of these well completion reports. See, this would take a geoscience team, and it does. It takes them weeks of work to pour through this and try to find the variety of events, there's usually about 16 to 17 that they look for, types of events that may have occurred. And of course, these are not just our drilling reports. These are reports from Shell, BP, Apache, Chevron, etc. And so all of the engineers, maybe different generations, they word things differently. Keyword searches don't work here. So they're spending six weeks up to maybe necessarily two months of reading this information before and summarizing it before they can even start their work. What if it didn't have to be that way? So this is a map of offshore Australia. Each one of those black dots represents an offshore well, as I said, between 50 and 150 million dollars to drill. Um, let's say we were interested in this particular area here. Um, what we normally would do is get a technical assistant to get all those documents together, print them out, and we'd have a, a good old read fest for the next six weeks. Or our drilling engineers or scientists could just draw a circle on a map or a square on a map, and we're done. Every drilling event for every well in that location, nicely summarized, in-depth order, and we're taking the unstructured data and turning it into structured data for further analysis. You can see in some cases, we've gotten a really good one. We've had a kick occurred there. Um, in other cases, it's worded completely differently, and the machines are still able to accurately assess the various incidents that have occurred just in the free text of these particular documents. Now here you can see we've had an influx of 2.5 barrels uh, and we increase the mud weight to 1.65 specific gravity. Um, that does not say kick anywhere. Trust me, anybody in the oil and gas industry knows that's a kick. So we're not relying on keywords anymore. Now in the words of Jurgen, he is running our geoscience team that is accountable for this. Um, actually, a couple of these are his shared uh, work studies. Um, we went from 80% of the time looking for the information and only 20% of the time figuring out what to do about it. What changes do we have to change in our wellbore design? Uh, maybe change, subtle changes in location or geological targets. We've now went from only 20% of the time looking for the information and now 80% of the time using the information, figuring out what to do with it, how do we have to adjust our designs. So we would have heard in other sessions that the cognitive era is not about the machines sort of replacing the humans. You can see how this actually is the perfect synergy between the two. Humans are really, really lousy at reading 20 times three of those things and making sure they found every particular event that has occurred. Machines are lousy at right now at figuring out what to do about it. But we put the two of them together and you can see the power of some of these cognitive engines that can really unlock the value for the business.